communion is something that we usually do uh, on the first Sunday of each month. But during this time where we can't get together, what are we supposed to do with this? I read an article earlier this week where four pastors from across Canada were asked if they would celebrate communion during the COVID-19 shutdown, even if it ended up lasting three months or longer. And all of them stated emphatically that they would not. They wouldn't lead it online, over a video conference. They wouldn't even instruct or encourage people to have it in their homes. And these pastors, they all had various reasons why they wouldn't do it. And some of those reasons, they seemed valid. But others, to me, seemed to come from a place of fear. They were afraid of there being a lack of accountability. They feared making theological errors. They were afraid of making mistakes. But you see, I don't think that's how our Lord wants us to approach his table. Afraid. Certainly, we don't want to be careless when it comes to observing communion. And I think we need to be doing it with sincerity and thoughtfulness. But we also want to make sure that we do it in obedience, to remember, celebrate, and praise him for what he's done for us. You see, this is a new season that we're in. And we aren't able to practice those things we do when we get together in traditional ways. But I see that in many ways that the Spirit of God is doing, he's doing new things. And you see, new wine, it needs new wineskins. And so it needs new ways of doing these things. At least maybe some of these ways are new to us. Or we can just choose not to do it at all because we're afraid of making mistakes. But I don't want to live like that. And I don't think God wants us to live like that either. I think if we try something, and let's say it's a total bust, or a couple months down the road, we look back on it and we realize that we erred. Well, then we'll repent. And in humility, we believe that God's grace is far greater than the mistakes that we end up making while trying to be faithful to him and to one another in these unprecedented times. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29, the Apostle Paul, he writes to the Corinthian church who they made a lot of mistakes when they were taking the Lord's Supper. And he lays out the reasons why we take the Supper and how we should do it. He writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. And so first Paul gives us the meaning of what this supper is. This bread and cup, they represent Jesus' broken body for us and blood shed for the redemption of all who believe. It establishes the new covenant of salvation. And so by taking these elements, we identify with the life of Christ and proclaim his death until he comes back. And taking the bread and the wine with other believers, it expresses the fellowship and the unity of all believers with Christ. And through it, we remember and celebrate and praise. And then Paul gets to the practice of these things. He says, listen, in preparation, we need to examine ourselves. And so first, do we understand what this communion means? Second, do we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior? And third, are we accountable to our church family? And are we living in right relationship with them and with God? And if we've done all these things, and if we are doing all of those things, then I would say, and I would encourage you, hey, let's take and eat. You know, if you live with other believers, then do it in your homes. 
If you have a Christian roommate or a spouse who follows Jesus, then, then take the bread and the cup. Or if you have children at home, I would say take some time to explain this ritual to your kids. Maybe for some of them, this will be their very first time taking communion. And I think that that would be so special. What a great memory during this, this really down time. Or if you don't live with others or the others that you live with, they aren't believers, then I would encourage you to take some time this week or next week and call or video chat with a friend or a relative or someone from the church, someone who loves Jesus and together remember and celebrate. And it may seem strange, right? But new things, they always seem a little strange. And remember that these new things, they need new ways of doing them. And so I want to say in that vein, you don't need a little thimble full of Welch's grape juice or a little cube of gluten-free bread to do this. You can commune and give thanks while enjoying a nice glass of wine or even a beautiful clean cup of water from our taps. You can eat a whole loaf of bread if you want to or even just a few saltine crackers. But let's not be afraid. Let's do this in faith. Let's remember his body and his blood shed for you, shed for me. And finally, if you decide that this is all just too strange for you, that you would rather wait until we can all gather together again before taking communion. Hey, listen, that's fine too. So take, eat, and remember, rejoice, and praise. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.